Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. Um, it is sunny here and the sun is out and I can actually go out and it's kind of warm. It's like in the high 60s. I know for some people that's really warm, um, but it has been super nice. And though I hate, hate, hate daylight savings time, I have to say that it has been nice to come home from work and actually be able to spend a little bit of time in the sunshine. Um, today's video is my March book haul, so I'm about to go through all of the books that have sent, been sent to me lately by publishers, um, and there are a lot of amazing titles in this stack, but it's also quite a stack, so really I shouldn't dawdle because I have a lot to talk about. But as I always say, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your good reads, however you keep track of your TBRs, because a lot of these books are going to wind up on it. And then also order them from your local independent bookstore, pre-order them if they're not out yet and they fascinate you, or get your library to order them or pre-order them so that they are in your hands and you can read them as soon as possible. Um, so let's get started. This is going to be a very eclectic mix. I have a lot of my normal stuff in here, a lot of sad literary fiction, but I have a nonfiction and I have at the end, I'm going to actually talk about some middle grade YA books that were sent to me that I'm super excited about. So this is a super fun uh, video with a lot of titles, so I better get started. As you guys know, if you watch my uh, channel at all, I am currently obsessed with the uh, Canadian writer Mir Miriam Toes and uh, her books, uh, Women Talking, which comes out next month, and then also All My Puny Sorrows, which I just read and thought was utterly brilliant. And the local independent press, Counterpoint Press, here in California is reissuing all of Miriam's books that have come out previously. I think all of them, at least five of them, I think. Uh, and two of them are already out and they sent to me. Thank you so much, Counterpoint. The first is The Flying Troutsman. This is the story of a woman who named Haiti, Hattie, who is in Paris when her boyfriend dumps her and she gets a call that her sister has been admitted into a mental health facility. She rushes home to take care of her sister's two children and they wind up going on a cross-country road trip together, learning about who they are and also sort of the crazy that makes them wonderful and also what brings them together. I am on board with anything that Miriam writes. I think she is freaking brilliant. Um, as I said in my last video, I hope to go on May 2nd. She's going to be here in California, and I cannot wait to meet her and see her. So, The Flying Troutman, it's out right now. The next one is also out, and it's a complicated kindness. This is the story of Naomi. She is 16 years old. Her mother and sister have disappeared. Her father is around. She works in a chicken slaughterhouse in Mantoa. Manitoba, Canada, sorry if I said that wrong, in a very cold place. Um, and this is sort of a coming of age novel as she um, deals with the fact that she lives in a Mennonite community. We all know that a lot of um, Miriam Toe's uh, books focus on the Mennonite community. And really this religion, how she fits within it, and it's also sort of destroyed her family in a way. Um, so this one sounds right up my alley and I think the cover is fantastic and I cannot wait to read. A Complicated Kindness by Miriam Taos. So two of her books, super excited about those. The next book is actually coming out in July, and that is this beautiful cover of Speaking of Summer by Kalisha Buchanan. This is also from Counterpoint Press, so thank you very much, Counterpoint. A little bit of a stock here from you. This cover just stops me dead in my tracks. This is the story of Autumn Spencer, whose twin sister, Summer, disappears on a cold December night. And what happens is she walks out on a rooftop and she the door is locked and she disappears. There's only one set of footsteps and no one can figure out what happened to her. But Autumn is obsessed with finding her sister. And as she is doing that, she starts to research, if I'm making sure, various murders of local women and the men who killed them and starts to really investigate the lives of these women and why local authorities don't tend to care about solving their mysteries. And the way it says on the back is that thinking of their stories and society's complacency towards them might shed light on what really happened to her sister. I think that sounds freaking fantastic. 
And again, if you guys are not blown away, I'm just going to stand here with this cover for a second. It's so amazing. So that is Speaking of Summer by Kalisha Buchanan. And this comes out on July 30th, 2019. Thank you so much, Counterpoint Press. I cannot wait to jump into that. You guys know when I get a release that's a little bit early, so that's in July, I request them or they're sent to me. I do tend to wait to read them a little closer to their due date so I can tell you about them closer to when they come out so that you do not forget about them and I don't forget about them. Uh, the next book that is, was sent to me was from the very lovely people over at uh, to, uh, to Lines Press, and it is they send these little translated fiction books that are just gorgeous. This is The Skin is the Elastic Covering that Encases the Entire Body by Bjorn Rasmussen, and it is translated by Martin Atkin. This is the story. I don't know much about it because this was sent to me out of the blue, so I apologize. I read the back. This is the follows a teenage uh, boy named Bjorn who, um, I want to hold that up a little closer, um, who to get and escape the world in which he lives with is a cutter. He cuts himself and he winds up in a relationship with a much older man. And the way that it describes it on the back is that it's a sadomasochistic affair with an older man that promises healing, but instead only harms him further. And as he spirals desperately out of control his understand, uh, for understanding, Bjorn struggles through revulsion, despondency, and grief, pushing his flesh to the limit. That sounds like it's going to be a dark, dark read. But I read the first few pages because I had not heard of this book. This is quite a translation. This is a very beautiful, beautiful translation. I'm not going to read to you. But that is The Skin is the Elastic Covering that Encases the Body, the Entire Body by Bjorn Rasmussen, translated by Martin Askins. Let me see if I can get you guys a, a release date. I didn't keep the paper. I apologize. I didn't keep the little paper they sent with me, so I don't know when it's coming out. But I will uh, definitely put that in the notes down below. So another small book that was sent to me by FSG, which is the company that also sent me Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss, the publisher. And I loved Ghost Wall. And I think I heard about this book on Mercedes channel. This is August 9th Fog by Catherine Scanlon. And this comes out, um, when does this come out? 6-4, so June 4th, 2019. This is a tiny little book. But from what I have discerned and why this book sounds so fantastic is that um, the author, 15 years ago, she found a stranger's diary. It's a five-year diary that she bought at an estate auction of an 86-year-old woman you guys know that that just clicked a huge box for me, who decided at 86 to chronicle her life. And so what Kate, Catherine does is she took that um, diary and she recreated the words and turned it into sort of um, a postmodern, uh, poetic, um, I don't even know how to explain it, but it is beautifully put together. It sort of is gonna be an adventure, not only in style and form, but in language. Um, I'm super excited to read this, um, and I think it sounds amazing. And anything that chronicles the life of an 86-year-old woman, you guys know I'm there for that. So I want to thank FSG so much for sending me this early copy. I didn't even really know that it was on its way, and I'm so excited for August 9th Fog by Catherine Scanlon. Perfect. Okay. Next is a nonfiction book. So... Last year, I went to Litquake in San Francisco. And if you guys are ever here during Litquake, look it up. They have all these different literary events. And I went to one because I wanted to see the amazing Kirsten Tren read from her book. And I got to meet a number of amazing authors. But I've got to re hear this woman speak who is writing a nonfiction book. And I had never heard of her and I had never heard of her book. And that is Night in the American Village, the Women in the Shadow of the U.S. Military Bases in o Okinawa by Akimi Johnson. Now, when she read from her book, it is amazing. So this is the story of the women who live in the tiny communities around the uh, military bases, the U.S. military bases in Okinawa, Japan. 
So I'm just going to read a little bit. It says, focusing on the women there, she come, follows the complex fallout of the murder of an Okinawan woman by an ex-U.S. serviceman in 2016 and speaks to protesters, to women who date and marry American men, and groups that help them when problems arise, and to Okinawans whose family members survived World War II. So I believe that she's a journalist by trade, so I think that definitely has some... Um, uh, play and how she is as a writer, but she also is interviewing these women and telling you their story about living in this sort of unique construct of a community um, that I think sounds fantastic and fa fascinating is really the word I wanted to use. When I heard her read from this book, I was just like spellbound, spellbound. So I want to thank the new press who sent me this. This comes out in June of 2019 as well. And that is Night in the American Village, The Women in the Shadow of the U.S. Military Bases in Okinawa by Akimi Johnson. Yeah, you guys, you know I don't talk about much nonfiction. So if it winds up on my radar, it usually means it's something that's really compelling to me. So there you go. This video is going to be so long because I have so many more books to tell you about. The next book that I was sent was A Thin Bright Line by Lucy Jane Bledsoe. Now, I want to thank Lucy Jane Bledsoe for sending me this copy. I met her at a book event, and she was actually friends with um, oh, Anne Raif. <laughs> oh, you know when you just have one of those total brain farts on names? I just did that. And that is... Um, so, Lori Otzlin and Anne Raif are friends with Lucy Jane Bledsoe. There you go. Um, this is the story uh, at the height of the Cold War. So it takes place during the Cold War. Lucy Bell Bledsoe um, is offered a job. She is offered a job in um, a scientific um, exploration to chronicle the um, polar ice cores. But um, as it says here, it says, but the joyful pangs of a new law clash with the impossible compromise of queer life. If exposed, she could lo lose everything she holds dear. So I have a feeling this is going to be a book about a love between two women. Um, and at the time period, the Cold War probably um, looked upon with a frown. And trying to be who you are, but also your career is important to you. What you do is important to you. Um, yeah, so I want to say thank you very much to Lucy Jane Bledsoe for sending this to me. Um, a Thin Bright Line. This is out. This is from Wisconsin Press. So thank you so much. Okay. Next is a book that was sent to me completely out of the blue. Um, but with my new obsession with thrillers, I was like, oh my goodness, I want to read this. And that is Forget You Know Me by Jessica Strasser. And this was sent to me by St. Martin's Press. So thank you very much, St. Martin's. So this is all I'm going to say to you. So this is the story of three friends, um, two women and a man. The, one of the women marries the man, and they, um, their marriage is, and friendship sort of all go in different directions um, because of sort of where life leads them. But one day, the husband goes out of town, so the two women decide that they're going to have sort of this Skype get-together on the computer where um, they're going to rekindle their friendship. And what happens is, um, and I don't remember their names. So Molly and Liza have always been close. So those are the two women. So um, what Molly um, is, Liza is watching Molly and Molly leaves to go check on a crying child. They're on Skype. So they're on video like you and I are right now. Imagine I walked away and then all of a sudden Liza sees a man walk in on the video, a masked man who turns off the video. Do you need any more? I did not need any more. I thought that sounded so creepy fantastic. So this is Forget You Know Me by Jessica Strasser. Um, thank you to St. Martin's Press. It is clearly already out. This is a beautiful hard copy copy. Um, and yeah, I think that sounds fantastic. I don't want to read any more in the blurb because I want to be surprised, but I'm already on the edge of my seat and I haven't even opened the first page. So I think that sounds so great. The next book was sent to me by Soho Press, and that is Rabbits for Food by Benny Kirschenbaum. And I'm probably saying that wrong, so I'm going to hold that up there for you. This comes out in May 2019. This is the story of um, a young woman 
on New Year's Eve who is at a party and finally has sort of that breakdown that has been coming. It's been inevitable. And she puts herself into or is put into a mental health facility. But instead of accepting the treatment that um, is being uh, forced upon her or administered to her by this facility, she decides as a writer that she's going to write about her fellow um, patients and also the story of how she wound up in this facility herself. And um, I hear that this book has an amazing sense of humor. And I want to say that Victor, the guy who wrote The Changeling, I just Victor Lavalle, um, I, probably, I always say his last name wrong too. He was talking about this book on um, Twitter and it made me want to read it automatically. And I think it's going to have a sense of humor, but I also have a feeling that it's going to t- uh, tug at some heartstrings as well. So I want to thank Soho Press so much for this early copy. It comes out in May of 2019. Rabbits for Food by Benny Kirschenbaum. So I apologize, Benny, if I'm saying your last name or your first name wrong. Okay, two more before we get into the YA. This was sent to me by Liverlight, and this is a um, Arturo's Island by Elsa Morante, translated by Anne Goldstein. Now, I have to tell you, I didn't know anything about this book when it was sent to me, um, but I read the back of it, and I guess... Um, and this is me because I'm not up on my Italian literature, but I guess that um, Elsa Moranti was a huge voice in, intellig- in Italian literature after the World War, uh, World War II, I believe. And um, this book says that imbued with a spectral grace as if told through an enchanted looking glass, the novel follows the adolescent Arturo through his days on the isolated Neapolitan island of... Procida, I said that wrong, where his mother long deceased, his father often absent, and a dog as his sole companion, he roams the countryside and the beaches and reads in his family's lonely, dilapidated mansion. This quiet, mirandering existence is upended when his father brings home a beautiful 16-year-old bride. I actually think that sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, I am so excited. So I want to thank Liverlight so much for sending this to me. Let me see if I can figure out when this comes out. Oh, it came out in February. So you can get your hands on a copy of this right now. So that is Elsa Morante's Arturo's Island, translated from the Italian by Anne Goldstein. Okay, the last book in the adult section. Um, let's be honest, why in middle grade is for adults too. I don't know why I just said that. Um, as you guys know, I joined Grey Wolf Press's um, Galley Club. So for, I think it's a hundred and something dollars a month. I'm sorry, a hundred and something dollars a year. Every other month, they will send you a galley, a book that is coming out that year from them. And it comes with all sorts of nifty stuff. This one came with a beach ball that says Grey Wolf Press on it. And that is Machine by Susan Steinberg. Now, I know nothing about this because it just came in the mail. But let's read. It says, this book revolves around a group of teenagers, both locals and wealthy out-of-towners, during a single summer at the shore. After a local girl drowns, the narrator tries to piece together what happens and struggles to find mooring in the aftermath. In formerly daring prose, I will say the structure of this looks very different, um, which, you know, I'm all about right now challenging my stylistic uh normality. Um, And it says, uh, Steinberg captures the violence of desire in its reverberations. The restless rhythm of the novel propels a sharply drawn narrative that fiercely interrogates interrogates gender, class, privilege, and the disintegration of identity in the shadow of trauma. Whoever wrote that blurb is freaking brilliant because they have sold me 100% on Machine by Susan Steinberg. Now, this does not come out until August 20th of 2019. So, It is super early, so you will not see this again from me in quite some time because I will read it much closer to August. But please, if that sounds good to you and it sounds amazing to me, pre-order this book, Machine, Susan Steinberg, Grey Wolf Press. This one is part of the Grey Wolf Press Galley Club. Okay, let's do some YA and children's fiction. I want to thank Scholastic so much for sending me these two books. How cute are these things? I have a feeling I'm going to be reading these with my nieces and nephews for Christmas. This is Pug Pals, Two's a Crowd, is book one, and Yay for Vacation, or Vacay, is number two. 
It is as adorable as you think. It's the story of two pugs. Clearly, one is brought into the relationship later. The art is absolutely adorable. This is by Flora On. I want to just say thank you. I think they're so cute. I cannot wait. They're both out already. Scholastic does amazing publications for children. Um, yeah, everything about this I absolutely love. So, Pug Pals by Flora On. Thank you so, so much. Those look adorable. The next book was sent to me by Page Street Press, and they actually sent me two books. And this is Echo North I actually, by, I'm sorry, Joanna Ruth Meyer. I actually requested this one because I saw a blurb of it, I think, in Publishers Weekly. And I thought, one, the cover is amazing. And two, it sounds fantastic. So this is about Echo. Echo is a... Um, she lives in a world where her father leaves... A, for the city and mysteriously disappears. It took me a minute to remember what this one's about. He disappears. Six months later, she finds him frozen, frozen in the woods, guarded by a wolf. And a wolf, the wolf basically gives her this ultimatum. She can have her father back, but for one year she must live with him. And she decides to, and she goes to his house. And the way the book describes it is, in the wolf's enchanted house beneath a mountain, each room must be sewn together to keep the home from unraveling, and something new and dark and strange lies behind every door. When centuries-old secrets unfold, Echo discovers a magical library full of books turned mirrors, a young man named Hal who is trapped inside of them. As the year ticks by, the rooms begin to disappear, and Echo must solve the mystery of the wolf's enchantment before her time is up. Otherwise, Echo, the wolf, and Hal will Hal will be lost forever. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds so fun. I just think that sounds good. And anything about a fun library. So this is Echo North by Joanna Ruth Meyer. Okay. Uh, Page Tree also sent me this book. I didn't know anything about it, but it is Stronger Than a Bronze Dragon by Mary Than. Here we go. It says, as a warrior who protects her village from shadow spirits, Annalie has never been beyond the borders of her town. All that changes the day the Viceroy and his fleet of mechanical dragons arrive. It's the for the protection of her village, she is given away in exchange for marriage. Torn between wanting to protect her village and her own freedom, she is forced to make a sacrifice. The day before she, her wedding, she encounters Tai, a young thief who is trying to save his people. Tempted by his quest and the thrill for glory it promises, the two embark on an epic journey to the courts of hell to discover where the shadow spirits come from but the secret of their existence is not easily solved i think that sounds fun i think that sounds like if you have a ya reader in your life any of them they'll actually enjoy that so thank you page street books for stronger than a bronze dragon by mary fan last but not least this has been a video guys is the Dis the princess and the fangirl a geekerella fairy tale by ashley pa pa poston this was sent to me by Quirk Books. Now, I think Geekerella was the first book, and this is sort of a book adjacent um, in this series. I did not read Geekerella, but this book just sounds like a really a lot of fun. This sounds like a tale, like a twist on um, The Parent Trap, kind of. So it says, teen actri actress Jessica Stone is one of the stars of one of the most biggest, the biggest movies in the world, and she couldn't hate it more. She found out the hard way what it's like to be part of the Starfield mega fandom, but thanks to the death of her character, Princess Amara, she can finally say goodbye. However, she has to attend this con one more time. And Imogene Lovelace is the, is the biggest fan of this movie, Starfield, and she is upset that Princess Amara is no longer. So she is at this con trying to get it her reinstated. What happens is they look a lot alike and their identities get switched, and someone leaks the script to the second movie and an adventure per, uh, um, ensues. The women must find out what happened, who stole it, who released it. And as the two switch hotel rooms, badges and lives so Jessica can pursue the thief. But when Imogen classes with Jessica's nerdy but hot assistant and Jessica finds herself falling for Imogen's best friend, their perfect con goes haywire. If the princess and the fangirl have any chance at a happy ending, they'll have to rescue themselves and each other. So there you go. Thank you, Quirk Books. You know how much I love Quirk Books. And that's The Princess and the Fangirl by Ashley Post Poston. This is a Geekerella fairy tale, and this comes out in April. 25 minutes, guys. This is going to be 25 minutes. So that was a lot of books. I hope you guys are super excited by all of them. There is not one in this list that I am not excited about 
I need to read. I need to get off the world and just read. So as always, if you're a return subscriber, thank you so very, very much. I really appreciate it. If you are new to my channel, I hope you like all of these books and you come around additionally to get more book recommendations because I love to do it. As always, I wish you happy reading and until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye!